In 1956, President Dwight D. Eisenhower took the road system of the United States to a new level by signing the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956, which created the interstate highway system. Coming at a time of limited cultural and racial consideration, these new roads cut through minority neighborhoods and buried historic sites under layers. Of grading material and road surfaces, you may have heard of the destruction of some significant archaeology at Cahokia in the St. Louis area. However, even battlefields of the War of the Rebellion were and are still threatened by the growing and widening U.S. interstate system. Many modern battlefield parks are in relatively isolated areas or have been protected against the threat of urban encroachment. However, not all parks are that lucky. Despite valiant recent efforts, much of the Battle of Franklin remains buried under urban development. Hardly any trace of the Battle of Nashville remains today. In contrast. Places like Antietam, Shiloh, Chickamauga, and Gettysburg are significantly preserved today. Sadly, as the urban landscape and modern workplaces change, people are seeking homes in the ever more distant sub and exurbs around major metropolitan areas. With longer and longer commutes and ever more people commuting to work in public. In mass transit-less regions of the country, traffic volumes increase, bringing about the construction of more and wider roads, threatening the historic fields of the War of the Rebellion. Today, for example, the southern section of the U.S. siege lines at Vicksburg is covered by Interstate 20. The park's mutilation will be subject of a future video. Interstate 24 cuts through the line of battle at Missionary Ridge in Chattanooga, and then there's Lee Highway through the Manassas Battlefield Park. In response to President Eisenhower's Federal Aid Highway Act, the Virginia Department of Highways in 1957 contemplated using Lee Highway right through the middle of the park for a new interstate highway connecting Washington with the Shenandoah Valley. Park Superintendent Francis Wilshire requested more information to assess the impact of the road project on the park. On March 12, officials from the department came to the park's visitor center to present their proposal. The plan called for a widening of Lee Highway to at least 300 feet to have significant room for the lanes, median strip, side strip. And service roads. Furthermore, the plan called for an interchange, Clover Stile, at Sudley Road, Route 234. The Clover Leaf intersection would have demolished the stone house. It was obvious that the plan would cause irreparable damage to the core of the park and cause a major intrusion on Henry Hill, destroying the stone bridge and stone house. 
potentially even the New York Monument. As a result, the National Park Service formally requested that the Virginia Department of Highways reconsider its plans. When the agency refused, Wilson decided to bring public pressure. He addressed the Civil War Roundtable of Washington, D.C., which coincidentally met the evening of the State Highway hearing. That evening, Bruce Catton was supposed to be the featured speaker, with 300 members present. Wilson, in an emotional speech, told the assembled group of the plan to carve up the battlefield park and the destruction of history, requiring a stand like the Greeks at Thermopylae. That evening, the Round Table adopted a measure protesting the plan and petitioned the Department of Highways to consider alternate routes. Besides sending this resolution to Richmond, the Round Table also sent it to 80 other Round Tables to increase the pressure on the Virginia Department of Highways. The campaign likely reached some 10,000 people. Letters poured into the department in Congress. Wilson continued his publicity campaign to protect the park with a number of, of additional speeches at other civic and patriotic organizations. He was able to rally the support of the mayor of Manassas, Manassas Town Council, and Prince William Board of County Supervisors something unusual for the latter, as we will explore in other videos in the future. The press and news media picked up on the story, running a variety of articles and shows on the subject. The pressure campaign worked, and the Virginia Department of Highways decided to pursue the southern alternative around the park for Interstate 66. This was not the end of the problem, as in 1958, the chairman of the Prince William Board of County Supervisors resurrected the Lee Highway idea. In response, the park leadership went to Representative Howard Smith and made sure he understood the historic significance of the location and Lee Highway. They were able to do so in plans to build an interstate through Manassas National Battlefield Park died. Sadly, traffic problems and road widening issues continue to plague the park to this day. There was talk about widening Lee Highway and Sudley Road in the late 1980s, but the idea again came to nothing. It remains an ongoing battle, and the Shenandoah Valley has become a more recent battleground in the struggle between preservation and modern infrastructure needs. The Shenandoah Valley was one of the most fought-over regions during the War of the Rebellion, with towns in the northern parts of the valley changing hands numerous times. By one estimate, Winchester changed hands some 70 times in the course of the conflict. By the mid-1960s, the tranquility of the of the valley was rudely disturbed when construction crews came through to build Interstate 81. At the time, there were no battlefield parks protected by the National Park Service in the valley. The history of the NPS in the Shenandoah Valley remains tainted by the creation of Shenandoah National Park. The interstate cuts through the battlefields of Newmarket, Fisher Hill, Cedar Creek, and 2nd and 3rd Winchester, as well as touch on the battles of Kernstown, thus impacting some of the key battlefields in the Shenandoah Valley. In the early 2000s, the Virginia Department of Transportation and the Federal Highway Administration began planning for a widening of Interstate 81. The entire length of the interstate in the state was to expand from four to six lanes, with some urban areas getting even more lanes. Instead of cutting into the wide green media, the proposal was expanding the interstate outward, impacting even more property owners along the route, and of course, the battlefields, which were already suffering from the interstate's existence. The impact 
especially on Cedar Creek, would have been substantial, with not only the widening using battlefield lands, but also the changes required to the interchange with Interstate 66 to Washington. The Shenandoah Valley Battlefield Foundation, the Civil War Preservation Trust, aka our modern American Battlefield Trust, and the National Trust for Historic Preservation, among others, protested the proposal. Instead, they suggested a less intrusive plan with climbing lanes for trucks and longer acceleration ramps for traffic entering the interstate. Furthermore, the group suggested using the median for any improvement projects to not impact surrounding communities. It is not uncommon for DOTs to remove medians to expand interstates, such as along Interstate 20 in Alabama, for example. In the end, the state and VDOT took the suggestions and opposition serious and altered the plans to include these types of projects. As a result, the only widening that would happen near the Cedar Creek battlefield was an extra lane on the southbound side, which would only touch small parts of the early battlefield. There is no additional impact on the Fisher Hill battlefield. Also unimpacted was the New Market battlefield. In Winchester, however, the new plan called for a widening of the interstate between exits 313 and 317 which is where much of the Third Battle of Winchester transpired. Despite the untiring efforts of preservation groups and individuals like Jonathan Oyalis at the McCormick Civil War Institute at Shenandoah University, little of the three battles of Winchester is preserved today. While the impact of the interstate widening in the Shenandoah Valley is much less invasive as initially planned, there is still some destruction. It is worth remembering that in contrast to Manassas, with a long-established national military park and a significant historic-oriented community, things are different in the Shenandoah Valley, where community and national park service continue to have a tenuous relationship. At the same time, these are battles that have and will continue to occur. Battles between the preservation and heritage community who want to preserve as much of a battlefield as they can and the growing demands of our car-focused infrastructure from housing to shopping and commuting needs. There are no easy answers of how to balance preservation and infrastructure needs. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.